but my heart just hasn't been satisfied in, in some areas. And it's almost like I've been in this place where my heart has shifted and nothing satisfies it. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? It doesn't seem like anything can bring relief for this place that my heart is in. It feels like I've maximized this level and my grace is up for this level. And my heart is shifting for the next. It's like my heart is starving for what's next. And you get to a point where you try to figure out what's wrong with me. But it's not necessarily anything that's wrong with you. Unless God makes you uncomfortable, you won't make a shift. And so I've been, me and my wife have been talking about it. I've been praying about it. How do I get to the next level, God? How do I do that? And as a competitor, I absolutely hate to lose in anything I do. And when your heart isn't satisfied, you feel like you're losing. And so I just began to talk to God and say, what are the changes I need to make? What, what do I need to do to stay and keep myself on a winning path? And God began to deal with me about some things. And so I remember when I first got saved in the beginning stages of my walk, there was a lot of mistakes I made, but I still kept it on with this walk. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. But when I first got saved, there was a lot of things I used to hear. A lot of scriptures I used to hear. I used to hear so much about the laws of sowing and reaping, and I didn't understand them all, but I knew in my heart that I needed to sow. And so I would hear stuff like Malachi 3, 8 through 10. We've all heard it, but we're going to put it up so we can read it. It says, will a man rob God? Yet have you robbed me. But you say, wherein have I robbed thee? in tithe and in offering. You are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there will be meat in mine house. And prove me now wherewith, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you shall not be room enough to receive it. God said, if we're doing this thing right, there should be so much blessing coming your way that you ain't got enough places to fit it. That, th that there's just, you ain't got enough space for the blessing that should be yours. That's what the word says. But it starts off with bringing the tithe into the storehouse. Yes, sir. And then there were scriptures like 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, where it says, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly nor of necessity. For God loves a what? Woo. That was a hard one to swallow when your mind wasn't renewed to give and they're telling you to give and it's sometimes it was grudgingly. Am I the only one? What I know now that I didn't know then was that because the word is true, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, my faith was strong in the area of sowing, but because I didn't hear a balanced message. I didn't have the faith 
to reap or to receive. And the only things I remember when they talked about reaping was a bad stigma, which was, you better watch how you treat people because you reap what you sow. Don't talk about people because you what? Reap what you sow. Don't steal because you... And if they really wanted to emphasize the point, they would say, don't do that because you don't want a harvest to come back to you. So reaping got a bad rap and it made me think that reaping was a bad thing. Am I talking to anybody here? The other thing that was inferred was that if you're going to reap, it is only a blessing if it comes from God and not from people. Because if it comes from men, because if it comes from men, then they get the credit. Or it can't be somebody who knows you and knows your situation. What most people don't understand is God uses people to bless you. And that's usually the vehicle in which you're going to reap from is other people. Why? Because they need to sow so they can reap. I want to bring a balance to this sowing and reaping message. So I'm going to start a new series called The Faith to Reap. How many of y'all ready to reap? No, 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 no. How many of y'all really ready to reap? How many times have you heard these statements? If you sow more, you'll reap more. Or you need to put more seed in the ground. That's why you're not reaping like you should. Or here's a real good one. If it doesn't meet the need, it's what? It's a seed, right. So then the question becomes, when has it become enough to meet the need? What so many preachers have done is they have made the reaping works-based versus faith-based. And I've seen, can I just speak from experience? Can I talk to y'all for a hot second? Can I pastor y'all? It's almost like the giving carrot has been dangled out there. And just when you get ready to get to it, they snatch it back. And so as a result, there's always been this constant giving but the people have not been having the constant reaping. Because they did an amazing job on building you up to give. They've hyped you up. They've worded you up. They've even scared you up. But how do I reap from all the seeds I've sown? Where is my harvest? How do I get what God says belongs to me. We're going to get into some stuff today, y'all. Go with me to Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Starting at verse 22 in the New King James, it says this. While the earth remains, Seed time and harvest. Say seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. Say cold and heat. Cold and heat. Winter, and summer. Winter and summer. And day and night. And day and night. Shall, not Shall not cease. Now, the Greek word for the word remains means time. So it says, while there's still time, while there's still time, seed time and harvest. Now that word seed time means sowing or planting. 
It also means offsprings, descendants, and children. We think seed is just what we plant in the ground, but he's saying, no, that's anything that comes from you. That's seed. And then he says, it shall not cease. That word cease means it cannot be destroyed, eliminated, stopped, nor will it fail. So let's break this down. Let's read this with those thoughts in mind. It says, while the earth still has time, Seed time or sowing or planting and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer and day and night, shall not, say shall not, shall not not be stopped, shall not be destroyed, shall not be eliminated, and nor will it fail. Now, my wife is, before she eats something, she is a label reader. How many of y'all are some label readers before you eat stuff? Now, when you read the label on a box, a can, or whatever, usually the first word on there is what there's the most of, right? So the first thing God said in that scripture is, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest. So that means even if you go to a place where there's no cold, seed time and harvest still remains. Even if you go to a place where there's no winter, seed time and harvest still remains. Even if you go to Alaska and there's times when it's not days for a month, it's night for a long, seed time and harvest still remain. So this is always a working process, a progress, always there. Then we got to learn how to master this. We've been doing good in the sowing. I get, I get that. But I want to do better in the reaping. While the earth is still here. It is made up of a system of putting in and getting out. God is saying this, as long as you can come up with seed, he can make a harvest come up for you. Do me a favor, go with me to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm getting my harvest. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 in the Amplified says this. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do superabundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers. That means he can do, you hear what he said? I can do infinitely, infinitely beyond the best prayer that can come out of your mouth. God can do way better than that. Hopes or dreams according to his power that is at work within us. There is a power that's at work within us that's greater than our greatest prayers, our biggest dreams, our our hugest hopes. There's a power that works in us that's greater than that. So what is this power that is given to us? Romans chapter 12, verse 3, in the New Living Translation says this. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. What's that power? Faith faith. I think the biggest hindrance to our reaping is we taking credit for stuff God has done. How many times have you heard people get, make this statement? My faith got me that. You don't have any faith. It's the faith that God has given you. It's not your faith. You're using God's faith to get this. But we're up and say, oh, my faith got me that. Ooh. 
You're taking credit for something God has done. Because you wouldn't even believe it if he didn't give you the ability to believe it. If we are to use God's faith, why aren't we living and dwelling in a place of superabundance? If seed time and harvest works and it's continually working, why aren't we living in this place where we're not struggling, where we're not living from check to check, where we're not hoping that there'll be enough to pay our bills? We must build our faith in the area of reaping. Go with me, if you would, to Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. We awful quiet today. Y'all listening, that's what it is, right? Y'all want to get this, right? Y'all want to get to that next level, right? You want to get beyond where you are to where you know you should be. You want to get to the place where this level you're on is no longer your ceiling but your floor. Are you ready to get to that place? Yes. Galatians chapter 6, starting at verse 7 says, Do not be, be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he will also reap. Verse 9 says this. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For what? In whose season? In due season. season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. But King James says faint. We shall reap if we faint not. Now that word faint in the Bible means loose your hold. But if you think about it from a natural standpoint, when a person faints, it's a temporary loss of consciousness, right? So God is saying you'll reap if you don't lose your consciousness about the seeds you sown. If you don't stop thinking about that seed you sown, you'll reap. But so often, our seed sowing is just done in our subconscious because we've been programmed to give that we forgot that there is something I need to do to reap. It's gone from us thinking about it to we don't even think about it anymore. It's an autopilot, so our autopilot doesn't require faith. Our autopilot doesn't require us believing God because we don't even think about it anymore. He said, don't lose consciousness about what you've sown because you won't believe me to reap. He said, don't faint, don't faint. Think about this. A farmer, he plants seed. A farmer knows when due season is. He knows when it's time to sow. And when he sows, he doesn't lose consciousness of what he's sown. He constantly goes and checks on it. Making sure weeds aren't growing to choke out the seed. Making sure the ground is ready for it to receive the seed. Making sure it's everything it needs to produce the most it can produce. The farmer's constantly watching over that seed. And so when the season, the due season comes, because he understands, there's a season I have to sow. First of all, there's a season I got to plant, I got to make sure the ground is ready. I got to make sure the ground is ready. And then I have to make sure I sow in the season it is for me to sow. Then there's, the Bible talks about seed time. So then there's some time I have to wait. And I got to do what the word says. I, I got to let patience have her perfect work so that my seed will be whole and complete. My harvest will be whole and complete. And I'm not wanting for no thing. Yeah. 
And then there's my season to reap. But the farmer understands that it's not God that's going to go get it. It's me who sowed the seed that's got to go get it. He understands that. But for some reason, Christians forget. If I sow a seed, then I got to go get my harvest. We think God's going to bring the harvest. He don't bring no harvest in. You got to go get your harvest. And so here we have, our harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few because they don't know it's harvest time. So you got all this full grown mature harvest waiting for you and God is saying, get it, go get it. That's why you're irritated with this, with this season in your life because it's time to get to the harvest season. It's time to get to the reaping season. It's time for you to go get what you've planted. But I just like being in the comfortable season. Comfortable people don't get harvest. Hungry people go get harvest. Thirsty people go get harvest. Aware people go get harvest. Sensitive to what God is saying people go get their harvest. So we got to begin to build our faith up in, because he said as long as the earth remains, you're going to sow and you're going to reap. Not you might reap, not there's a good chance that you'll reap, but he said, you shall reap, which means there is no buts in that. And so we got to build up because we've done great with the sowing. Bless God, we've done good with the sowing. But there's a harvest that belongs to us. But let me help you understand this, though. This harvest ain't for you to just store it up. This harvest is bait for you to win the world. You got to understand that. Because the, word, the Bible says a poor man's knowledge is despised. But when you have some wealth behind what you say, they want to hear you like E.F. Hutton. And so our harvest is the hook. When they ask, well, how did you get that? Oh, so you really want to know? Jesus. This harvest is for us to have to be attractive to the world. Because they, they don't understand the God in you. Most of them don't want to hear the God in you. But they want to hear the wisdom of the wealth in you. And when that door gets open, you step through it with all the God you got. Rah! And you overwhelm them with the gospel. So much they're like, listen, whatever you got and however you got there, I want that. But it ain't for us. It's bait. And unless you have that mindset and you just have a covetous thought, this is just for me to get rich off of, your mindset's got to change. We're all bait. God uses us as bait to win the world. And so if he uses us, then he also uses what we have. So we have to begin to look at say, God, you got to help me. How do I do this? Because there's some areas in this world that we should be changing. Imagine what this world would be like if the Christians had majority of the wealth. And we controlled what the government could do. We controlled education, we controlled media, we controlled arts, we controlled music. Imagine if we controlled. What would this world be like if it lived by godly principles? But that ain't going to happen if we keep having to beg for loans. It's not going to happen if we keep going to them versus them thinking that we're valuable enough that they come to us. So we got to build our faith up in the area of reaping, y'all. We got to.
We got to. Listen, we've, we've seen the coin, the side of the coin that says, so, 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 but a coin isn't good unless it has two sides, a heads in it. The other side is the reap, 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 reap. God said it's going to be here forever. So if this process is going to be here, as long as this earth is here, then we need to learn how to master this process. We need to learn, we need to learn how to master this process. We need to be able to look at our lives and say, I see my harvest. I see my harvest. And God will show it to you. He'll show it to you. But we have to build up our faith. Y'all ready to start reaping like you've never done before? No, 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 no. Are you ready? To really start getting, here's what people have to understand, and then I'm, I'm going to close with this. In your seed is a harvest. You don't plant corn and get one kernel back. You plant a kernel and you get a stalk of corn with harvest in it, which is more seed to sow for more harvest. But the problem is for most people, they think, hey, I, had some, I got some harvest. Let's eat that. That harvest looks delicious. When that harvest should look like this is some wealth just came into my hands. And we have to know because God is taking care of everything. He's taking care of what we're supposed to. You should know what you're supposed to sow, what you're supposed to eat what you're supposed to wear, what you're supposed to drive, what you're supposed to drink, where you're supposed to live. All of that is all in your harvest. So we can't relegate it to one part. So we're going to get our harvest, y'all. And we're going to live on the next level. Are you ready to go to the next level? No, no, no. Are you really ready to go to the next level? Are you really at a place where you're irritated with this level? And the Bible says without faith, it is impossible. So we're looking for a harvest without faith. It's impossible. And here's the thing. The world knows these principles and uses them. It's called the stock market. They know the principles. They understand sowing and reaping. And they, the thing about that, it's a principle, which means it works for anybody who uses it or anybody who works it. Whether you in the world or whether you're in the church, I need, you, I need to know. Somebody who has a dollar, pull out a dollar bill for me, just quick. Pull out a dollar and just wave it. Come up here once, Pastor Yolanda. Now, how many of y'all are praying people? Know God, walk in the spirit. Tell me whether or not that is a secular dollar or a godly dollar. It's what you do with it. That's why that principle works for whoever uses it. Because there is no... These are godly dollars. They're, they become godly once you dedicate them to God. But until then, it's just a dollar to be used any way you want to. Thank you. But you got to understand that. My tithe belongs to God. And my offering is because I love God. Harvest time is here. The summer is harvest time. But here's the thing. You can't vacation on your harvest. Because this is a time in Milwaukee where people want to go on vacation, take vacation from God, take vacation from church, take vacation from work. Everybody wants to vacate. You're leaving during your harvest time. What does that mean? 
I got to stay in so in reaping mode during this time. I got to stay in reaping mode. Because here's the thing. If you constantly sow it, you should constantly be in reaping mode. Because your harvest is constantly coming in if you've been constantly giving out. You want to say something beautiful? There's a mic over there, or do you have one? Come on out. Come on. The blue mic. Is somebody there? It's, it's a mindset shift that has to take place. We need that mic on. Okay, go ahead. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, let me see it on your mic. Okay, come on. Come on close. <laughs> it's a mindset shift. <laughs> Don't start now. Won't be none. <laughs> But it's a mindset shift that you have, you have to adapt it and you have to adapt it in everything that you do. Once you get the principle, you have to make it, you have to make your mind think on that in everything that you do. We were in the home of a billionaire. We spent the night in his home. The next morning, Pastor Skip told him the night before, he said, yeah, we got to get back because Melva has to minister in the morning. I was walking out of his door. That man walked up to me and said, tell your people. Now, I had had little bits of conversations. I'm, I'm closer to his wife than I am here. But he said, tell your people that, yes, God does grace. But God will not do the work that he intended you to do. Amen. Amen. That's what a billionaire said to me. He said, yes, God will bless you, but he's not going to do the work that he's intending for you to do. And too many times we're looking up in the sky saying, Jesus, bless me. God, give it to me. God. And there's nothing wrong with saying, God, bless me. I've been praying that prayer all week. The prayers of Jabez. I've been praying it all week long. God, bless me. Enlarge my territory. I've been saying it every day, all week long. But guess what? When he blesses me, I have to have sense enough to open the door, to open the box, to open whatever it is, however the blessing comes, to step into it. You have to have the faith that says, I deserve to be in this. Mm -hmm. I'm good enough to be in this. And there has to be a consistent, continual mindset that expects, like we do with parking favor. Mm -hmm. We go into... We go into a lot, and he will look at me if the lot is full. Now, lately, I've been saying, I'm going to lay my parking. I have parking favor, but I'm going to lay it aside because I want to walk. So I've been parking further away on purpose. But even when I park away on purpose, when I get up close, there's a parking spot there. So the parking favor still works, but, but I go into the lot with an expectation that somebody is going to come out and when I tell you it happens and Kim and everybody that drives in the car with me knows that if I pull into a parking lot because I expect that my mind is set on that you said that it's in my subconsciousness that when I drive into a lot if every spot in the lot is full somebody is coming out of that store when I pull into that lot they're gonna come out of that store and give up that spot and then I'm gonna get into their spot that's how it has to be with you expecting a harvest and you expecting to reap in your subconscious. I have a right to reap when I walk into a room. I'm going to walk out with, they giving away something on, on, on a Friday night. I think it was Friday night. Pastor Tim, Nick Dillon, Denise Thomas, they did Think and Believe. I walked in saying, thinking. Thinking about this, God bless me. God enlarge my territory. I've been saying it all week. So I walk in this place. My husband gives me two tickets. I sat down. I said, I'm going to win something tonight. I had an expectation. The second name they called was, well, they didn't call names. The second number they called was mine. I had an expectation of a harvest. Do you all understand what I'm saying? I expect them to give me something. And now that you have given me this wisdom, now that you, now that you putting this out here, I'm taking it to the next level. I'm walking in looking. 
looking. So you have to put the pressure on what God said. He said, as long as the earth remains. It will not fail. It cannot be stopped and it cannot be destroyed. So it has to produce for me. And so even if I'm in a place and it doesn't look like it's producing, come back tomorrow. It's going to produce. Amen. I keep coming back until it produces. I don't stop coming back until I see the fruit of what I'm believing for. I don't let it go until it produces. Do you hear what I'm saying? You don't let it go until you see what you desire. Yeah. We, and I'm sitting down after this. We've been believing God for resources to come in for our summer youth camp. It was highly successful last year, MAP camp, for our kids. It's been in my heart for years to do MAP camp. We applied for funding with an organization six months ago. Didn't hear anything. Last Friday, I got an email saying, I'm sorry, we will not be funding your program. The fizzle just went, it's with every, women in worship and everything I'm thinking about right now, for some reason, the fizzle, ju it just busted my bubble to know that we would not have funding for those kids this year. And we partnered with Carter Christian Academy to bring other kids into the program. We're outreaching to the kids in the neighborhood saying, hey, you got a gift, come on. So the funding didn't come. I'm on the phone with Kim. I don't even want to talk about it. I'm just, I'm like, Lord, I've been asking you to bless me to enlarge my territory. We need the money for this camp. There are kids, babies like this one over here that want to play the congos, that want to play the drums. Kids, I need the funding. How come yesterday? An email comes into my mailbox. Yesterday or day before? Day before. An email comes into my mailbox. Some company has had a lot of money. And they got until June 1st to get rid of it. So I started, Kibo, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not even a grant writer, but I got that grant finished. Do you hear me? I got the grant fi finished. Stayed up all night. I'm like, oh, we getting this money. You hear what I'm saying? That if one door closes because the law is the law, it has got to work in your favor. The problem is, is we're not putting pressure. Wait, okay. Please, Lord, man of God. You got it. We got to put the pressure on the word of God. You got to put the pressure. You got to put the pressure on the word of God. When you know that you know that you know that you know, and you're not moved by anything other than what you know. Thank you, Father. God has to come through for you. Thank you, Father. Amen in Jesus' name. Come on, let's stand up. Let's thank God for the blessing to reap. So now, oh, offering. He said, do an offering. What you say? Right, no, it's not just for your money. It's for every area. He said it. He said it. He said it's for everything because the church has gotten, you know, we've gotten this thing so backwards and we, we became so focused on things for so long that we forgot about the harvest. We forgot about the purpose for the blessing. And you can never forget about the, you can never forget about the lost. You can never forget about the people that we've been called to help find their place of freedom. But I'm telling you that we got it now. Yes. God can trust us with the money now. No, it's not just for your, it's for every area of your life. So come on, lift your hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said as long as this earth remained, there would be seed time and harvest. You didn't even separate the two. You said seed time and harvest. You can't have them, can't have one without the other. You got to have them both. And many years, Father God, we have focused on just the side that said, so, but today we identify with the fact that it is your will for us to reap. And so for every seed, so we're going to back that truck up and we're going to go back to the very first time that we started sowing and didn't receive a harvest. And in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare 
that there will be a bumper crop, a bumper harvest for us in every area that we have sown a seed. We put a demand on every seed that we have in the ground, work seed, ministry seed, health seed, wisdom seed, blessing seed, helping seed, every seed that we have sown. We command in the name of Jesus that our lives will measure up and come into alignment with the spirit of reaping. And so, Lord, we thank you that it's so because we, be how many of you believe it? Then repeat after me, say, it is so. Today, I receive the anointing to reap every harvest for every seed that I have sown. Every seed in every form produce in my life now, today. Father, thank you for opening my eyes, giving me the wisdom to see every door that must be open. I will step into the door. I will come to the table with the ideas. I will make the decision. I will speak into it. I will do the work. You just show me. In Jesus' name. Come on now, let's bless him. Thank you know, all my life, I've always had to make a decision. I've always come up against challenges. There's always been voices that I've heard. Some good, some bad. Some I listened to, some I didn't. And most of the time, I didn't get words of encouragement. People say, I would never be a good leader. People said, I would never amount to anything. People said, I'm flawed. People said, I made too many mistakes. All these things were designed for me to be too afraid to take the shot. But sometimes you just have to shut out the voices and take the shot. I was told men wouldn't listen to me. And here I am doing a men's conference. Keeping it 100 Men's Conference 2018. Plan to attend on Saturday, October 13th for Real Talk Session, Getting It In Q&A, and Power Worship Night. Special life coaches include Skip Henderson, Chip Brim, and Marlon Locke. Guys, we got it. So take your shot. Meet me October 13th from 3 to 9 p.m. at the Keeping It 100 Conference. Men, let's win together. about how you're being cared for. You may not be in the pulpit, but you're well cared for. And your life speaks volumes to those outside the sheepfold. I'm saying, ladies, you got the power to shift your family. You got the power to shift your neighborhood. You've got the power. And I ain't seeing you move. But one thing I will do is I am fixing my eyes on the prize. And it may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But I know that you're going to come through. And when you do, I'm going to be ready. You go on to tell him that he prepares a table before you every single day in the presence of your enemy. When the bugs and the flies came, he anointed your head with oil and your cup 
ran over. And every time you go out and come in, goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life. And you're dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. That is the gospel. That's the good news. That's what he wants your life to say. So you got to come forth to do that. What a powerful message. But all the messages we do are designed for you to get to know Christ. So if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's so important to us that you have the opportunity. So if you could pray this prayer after me and you will have eternal life. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity for this individual to come to know you. I thank you, Father, that they've accepted you as being real. You said, Father, that if you confess me as Lord, I'll save you. So I appreciate so much, Father, for you saving my life, for now you being the Lord of my life, Father, for you leading me and guiding me. Thank you for sending me to a church that will help me to learn, to grow, and to develop. I give you glory and honor for this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if you said that and you believe that, you are saved. So do me a favor. Send us an email or send us a note or even give us a call. All of our information will be right up under you. Thank you so much for being a part of the World Outreach family. God bless you. We love you. Thanks so much for spending time with us today and allowing us to come into your home and you also coming into ours. We really need your help. We would love to have more partners because partnership helps this broadcast go out to more people. And we want you to be a part of changing lives. So if you could, give. Give with the understanding that this message and this gospel will go throughout the land. So thank you so much for being a partner with World Outreach and Bible Training Center. And for more information and even wanting to get this message, go to our website at www.worldoutreachbtc.org. Again, that's www.worldoutreachbtc.org. Thank you so very much.